Hello everyone, this is Tom Wonderland. Welcome back to more of Pokemon Stadium 2. Uh, since we've completed the stadium, I decide I'll go ahead and move on to another section of the main hub, White City. Uh, we're going to take another look here at somewhere else. This time I decide to show the Pokemon Lab. Uh, this is mainly going to be informative just to show you what is offered on the game mainly. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to see what there is on here. But I have this video to show this part of the game off nonetheless. I'm actually going to use my crystal pack here for interacting with the different gadgets that we'll find inside. And oh, I got a delivery for you, says Oak. Okay, this was the mystery gift I got a little bit ago. Um, if you're not familiar with that, I did show it off uh, in the very first video of this LP actually. If you're not familiar with what mystery gift is. Uh, you can do it on Pokemon Stadium too. Go to the intro video to see how to do that. Alright, there's four machines in here. The one machine is the one we saw as soon as we walked in the lab. This you just use to switch between the different game packs, but we're fine with the uh, crystal pack for now. But we still got three other machines here that we can interact with. Uh, I'll start with the one on the farthest right. This is a machine for organizing Pokemon and items. The highlighted parts show new Pokemon and new moves. And I'll go ahead and say here, um, if you have at least 150 Pokemon shown as caught on your Pokedex, um, Pichu will appear in the bottom right corner, and that means you're allowed to move the Pokemon between different games. And then whenever you catch 200 Pokemon, um, the Pichu starts to dance uh, whenever you see it in the corner. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate this quick. I'll go to the silver game pack because I know my friend has over 200 Pokemon caught. And then there, you can see a Pichu in the corner dancing. Um, basically what that means is uh, you've been given extra privileges that you can move between... You can move Pokemon between different games without going through the trading process and different things like that. I don't know specifically what everything is, if someone wants to clear that up for me. I just know that 150 is required to be shown on your Pokedex's caught status um, to move Pokemon between different games. And then something else unlocks whenever you get 200 caught. I don't remember what that is though, so if somebody wants to clarify that in the comments, feel free to do so. Okay, um, for here on this particular machine though, uh, you can look at lists, Pokemon, boxes, items, and the mail. Uh, the mail I'm not going to show off really much because I don't have any mail. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that right away. Uh, the list basically lets you look at um, all your Pokemon and their attributes as it implies in a list format. Uh, you can also get it so that the Game Boy boxes and the N64 boxes will show up, but I'm not going to do anything with either of those just to make it simple. I'm just going to have my party Pokemon be displayed. As you can see, you can look at all the Pokemon that I have on my party for my Crystal game right now at this moment. You can see what their nicknames are, but I haven't really given them any. Gender, area, uh, what types they are. And then there's more than one page. You can uh, flip to another page to look at uh, what level they're at, their HP, and all their stats. Uh, the next page shows you what moves that they've learned. And the page after that, which is the last page, shows the trainer and their ID number as well as the tame status. Uh, the tame status indicates like the friendship level. As you can see even Umbreon says excellent. Uh, you need to have a very high friendship for some Pokemon for them to evolve such as the Eevee to get Umbreon. Uh, that's one of those required Pokemon that... let me reword that, sorry. <laughs> Umbreon is required by... Um, t oh my god, I can't even talk. To get Umbreon, it is required for you to have Eevee with a high friendship and you have to level it up at night. That's how you get an Umbreon. And in addition to the tame status, it also shows what item they're holding. As you can see, I have each of them holding something unique. And the other status um, shows a couple different things. I do know one thing that will be indicated there. It'll indicate if the Pokemon is shiny with like a little star icon. That will show up on the other s section. I'm not sure what other symbols or notes might go there, but I do know the shiny uh, attribute will be displayed under the other tab. 
Okay, that's it for this. Uh, you can also pick each Pokemon and sort them by different groups. You can also check them. It says to use item, hold item, take item, or exchange items. You can move them between different boxes or PCs between the game, the 60 N64 cartridge. And you can also just take a look at the Pokemon itself if you want. And you're probably noticing the Onyx is holding a metal coat right now. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, this is pretty much it for the list though. Uh, there's just Pokemon, boxes, and items yet. Pokemon, as it implies, it was kind of like what I was just doing there a little bit ago. It lets you look at each individual Pokemon as well as you can also check their moves with the C buttons if you so desire. That's up to you. And you can also, um, in addition to just checking the Pokemon, you can change what's being displayed. If you want a Game Boy box to be shown instead, you can do that. I'm just going to have it set to party though. Uh, you can move Pokemon between different boxes if they're not full. Uh, you can also reorder them, but they were fine the way they were. Uh, you can also exchange Pokemon between different boxes, but again, they were fine the way they were. So I'm going to let that alone. And you can also release Pokemon if you want, but I kind of recommend staying away from that. And that's really about it for like the different Pokemon that's shown there. Similar to list format, but it gets more intricate with how they're organized, basically. And the same goes for boxes. It was actually pretty similar to what I just did here. Uh, the main difference, though, is um, it's just sorted by box format. You can take a look at the Pokemon in an individual box. Uh, same as what the uh, Pokemon tab was. Um, I have mine named differently. I have mine so that they're sorted by types rather than box number. Uh, you can also see what's um, in other game packs uh, between the Game Boy game pack and then the N64. Uh, if you're not aware of this, the N64 does have boxes for storing Pokemon as well, so use that to your advantage. Not even just Pokemon, but items too, so keep that in mind. Uh, oddly enough, you can move all the contents of one box. Or let's try this here. Move the named box. Hmm, that was interesting. It put it on the N64. But yeah, it just basically moved the box, as well as the name of the box, over to the N64. I'm not going to save the changes though, because I was fine with the way it was. You can also reorder the boxes if you want up to you. Exchange boxes. Oh, this, I guess that's if you exchange Pokemon. I know I'm getting really confusing with this. And you can also name the boxes, such as this one, if you want to change its name. Okay. Uh, I do not want to save. Quit without saving. And last but not least, we have the items, and I don't mind showing this off. This is just what I have on my game pack, and then what's in my PC. You can also change it to show um, the metal case and the color case. But as you can see, I have nothing in either of them. Um, on my first stadium game, I do have a ton of stuff saved on the N64, but I don't have anything in the metal case. Uh, the metal case is for gold, silver, crystal games, and the color case is for red, blue, yellow. As I mentioned, all of my uh, Pokemon Yellow items are on my first Stadium games for the items that I put on it. Uh, I never really did anything with Gold, Silver, Crystal, that's why there's nothing here. <laughs> I guess that's my bad for not looking at this stuff as a kid, <laughs> so to say. No, I don't want to quit just yet. I'm going to change it back to what's in my pack, though. Uh, the different options are pretty much what was already shown before. You can check or move the items, up to you. As well as move a certain number of items if you desire. You can reorder them. If you want to do that, you can exchange them between the different boxes. And you can also organize them by kinds or sort by alphabetically, A to Z. Most of the items I do have, I either have in the PC or they're on, or in my pack, I should say. But most of my like good stuff, you can take a look there at my items in my PC. Pretty, I pretty much have all my goodies stored there. There's a good bit of stuff actually. Mm -hmm. 
I guess I should mention too, um, in the other, um, the other side with the pack, in addition to the regular items, you can also look at any Pokeballs you have, as well as TMs and key items, and HMs for that matter. Yeah, you can look at all that. And that's it for uh, the p functions of this PC, as I said. I would show off mail, but I really don't do anything with the mail. Uh, the mail is something in the game. You can buy like letters that you can have Pokemon holding, but I never really do anything with that. So that's why I don't have anything to show there. And over here at this next machine, this is a, a 3D Pokedex, actually. You can look at Pokemon in 3D. And there you can see a Pichu in the corner again. Uh, you can either view them in this format, or if you push A right away, I'll do it on the Cyndaquil, you can look at their Pokedex entry. You can also zoom in on them if you want to move them around. Just take a look at them at different angles. If you push, um, uh, let's see, what button is it? A, you can hear them uh, cry, basically. Um, yeah, you have all that uh, that you have at your disposal if you want to look at them in 3D. This is kind of similar to the uh, Pokedex 3D application that's on the 3DS, if you think about it, uh, since you can look at them in a 3D view. I just thought that was kind of neat that they had that on here. Uh, you can also listen to their cry if you want to do it that way. And the last thing that's pretty neat, I'm actually not going to do it with Cyndaquil. Well, I'll go ahead and show it anyway. Area Unknown, because Cyndaquil is not in the wild. But uh, this is what's cool. You can actually view in 3D the maps of Johto and Kanto, um, where the Pokemon can be found if they're found in the wild. I'm actually going to find one that you can find. Uh, Spearow's good, I guess. I'll go ahead and pick area again. And everywhere that you can find Spearow comes up in like a box that pulsates. And what's also cool is... Um, it indicates how often they can be found um, based on the time of day. It has morning and then afternoon, or I think it's actually day. They just call it morning, day, and night. Uh, Spiro is not something that can be found at night, though. At least I don't think you can. Because I don't see any moon symbols shown on the actual routes. But yeah, you can look at the different areas, you can find them. It also tells you, you can see right there, it may be found by headbutting trees about level 10. It also tells you what level you can find that Pokemon or, um, at, in addition to where they're at. So I think that's pretty cool that they at least give the level ranges as far as what level that Pokemon will be when you find it. So that's pretty cool. It also indicates the rarity of the Pokemon, how often you'll find it in that particular area, whether it's common or super rare. So that's pretty cool. And last but not least, you can also view it on the Game Boy map too. It's basically what you see on the um, the Game Boy game whenever you look at the Pokédex on there. And the same goes for Kanto. I'm not going to um, go through every single entry, but this is pretty much what the Pokédex is. It's basically a 3D Pokédex. You can look at it that way. And last but not least, we have this machine over here that's used for trading Pokémon. The highlighted parts show new Pokémon or new moves. And I am actually going to go ahead and demonstrate a trade. Welcome to the Pokemon Trade Service. And I will go ahead and trade with the Silver Game. Uh, nothing's going to be permanent, except there is one thing that will change for this particular trade I'm going to do. I will go ahead and demonstrate a trade right now. On my Crystal Game, I'm going to pick my Onyx. As they also mentioned, I'll go ahead and say quick, they were talking about the glowing stuff. Anything that's highlighted or glowing means that it's a new Pokemon, or it's a Pokemon with new moves. You can see right there how everything's flashing. Uh, but I'm going to trade the Onyx, and as I mentioned earlier, it is holding a metal coat. You'll find out what that is here in a second, why I have it holding that. And what the heck, I'll just pick the egg. Just to show that you can trade eggs between um, the Gold Silver Crystal games at least. Uh, eggs can't not go to... Um, they, they can't go to red, blue, or yellow. Just the, um, just the newer ones, second generation. Okay, the egg was sent to Robert. Meaning my game. Oh, but look at this. What? Onyx is evolving. Okay. 
congratulations, your Onyx evolved into Steelix. So yeah, if you don't have two Game Boy games to trade uh, between two different people, or rather two Game Boy systems, I should say, you can do it through the um, N64 game, assuming you have two transfer packs on controllers, like I do. But, Onyx is a Pokemon that can evolve by trading, as long as it's holding a metal coat. As you see, it became a Steelix, and I'm going to pick save and continue. I'm going to go ahead and trade it back so that it'll go back to my crystal game. Okay, that saved properly. But yeah, this is actually pretty cool how they at least give you an alternate way um, for trading. This is extremely helpful for people who don't have um, two different Game Boy Game Boy slash Game Boy Colors, like I just said a little bit ago. This gives, um... I, I don't like wording it this way, but pe like players who are alone basically have another way that they can trade Pokemon between games. And I know that sounds weird saying it that way, but all I'm basically saying is this gives you an alternate way that you can trade Pokemon between the games. And that's all I'm going to do, so I'm going to save and quit. Now I have a Steelix on my Pokemon Crystal, which is awesome. And that's it for the Pokemon Lab. There's nothing else to really show off here. Um, these are just some extra features that are on the game. So I thought I'd go ahead and show at least what they do. I'm actually not going to end the recording, but the next video that you're going to see, you guessed it, I am actually going to be starting the Gym Leader Castle soon. So until then, this is Tobe Wonderland. I'll be back in the next video. Probably the day after this one goes up, showing off the first of many gym leaders. Until then, peace out, guys.